Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you're having a great evening, a great Tuesday, and a great start to your work week. There's a lot to talk about um, in the tropics, and that's what's going to be the majority of this video. Um, in the meantime, right now, in the present time, you have a cold front that's sweeping through areas of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, and that is on the way for the majority of the eastern U.S. for tomorrow and tomorrow night into Thursday. Tropical moisture will continue to surge into the eastern U.S. In the meantime, there will be a flooding threat and a severe weather threat tomorrow, and I might make a video about that briefly in the morning to give you all the latest information, but we're not going to really talk about that much in this video. What we're going to talk about is 98L Invest. This is starting to have a worrisome look to it. Uh, the GFS has trended to the more dangerous looking European, and uh, I would say model guidance is increasing for some kind of landmass being impacted, whether that's the Lesser Antilles, the Greater Antilles, or the U.S. So that is what we're going to break down in this video. Uh, we're going to talk about what we know, how strong could get, uh, the factors in place that could, you know, that could prevent or um, definitely enhance big time development of this. And more importantly, we're going to break down the steering currents of 98L. Um, so this would be Sam, which is our next name storm. We have Rose still and we have Peter, but we're not going to talk about either one because they're pretty much uh, not going to do anything. But this would be Sam, which is the next name in the hurricane list, and that is really what we're going to break down here. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you have liked the video, definitely like the video. It helps get the videos out there. And thank you all for the amazing support. If you all got anything I can pray about, drop it in the comments. It gives me an opportunity to pray for you guys. It gives other an opportunity to look out for you and pray for you. Prayer is powerful, so take advantage of that. It's a, it's a great way to communicate with God. He's got your back, trust me. Um, I know I've been dealing with a little anxiety the last few days and I'm um, feeling a lot better uh, over the last uh, half day or so. So um, there's just been a lot going on, but thankfully things are working through and working out. So uh, thank you all for all the um, all the thoughts and everything like that. So let's get going here because there is there's a good bit to talk about. And there's a lot to discuss. So right now, per the latest 8 p.m. update, you have a 90 percent chance still of development of 98L. Now, What's been the trend today? There's a couple trends to talk about. What's one trend is that this is not going to develop as much in the short term. That actually is not good news for areas that can potentially be impacted down the road, like the Lesser Antilles and the U.S. So that would spell not good news for this area. Um, and be, the reason is because if you have a stronger storm earlier on, it can control its destiny, if you will, a little bit better with steering currents and, and, and factors in place like ridging of high pressure, like a trough. Um, it, it can kind of round the base of a high pressure a little bit better when it's a stronger storm. It could steer itself a little bit more. But that's not going to be the case. It looks like it's trending for more of a weaker storm in the short term. So that's something we need to watch out for. So, but right now, this is the one we're talking about. Still got Peter, still got Rose, but they're not really men uh, worth mentioning about much. 98L, this is it. It's basically just a big blob of convection out there. There's no real low-level circulation. Um, if there was, this would probably get upgraded to a tropical depression. But right now, it's just a tropical wave. It's interacting with a lot of Saharan dust, and I'll show you all that in here in a second, which is kind of preventing it from really steadily intensifying or anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over the European, we're going to go over the GFS, the ensembles. More importantly, we're going to go over the steering currents in place because that is going to be big. I will mention the main development region, which is this area right here, way out in the tropical de uh, development, usually around this time, uh, begins to turn off. Uh, the big time sh uh, threat for uh, any kind of tropical impacts normally shifts to the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. But in this case, um, you're still having a couple storms trying to keep going way out here. So here we go in time. We get into Thursday. Here's our tropical wave. Uh, we get into Friday, and I think by Friday, or early part of the weekend, we will have a named storm, and it will be Tropical Storm Sam. Look how south it is in latitude. When you have a storm further up here, that normally means it's not going to affect people. Now, there has been storms like Florence and things like that that has, has been uh, the X factor, if you will, or an example of them affecting the U.S. when you had a big-time ridge of high pressure to kind of trap it and bogged it a little bit more south. But in this case, this is a classic south latitude riding storm, <clears throat> which normally spells bad news for uh, populated areas. Now, this thing really begins to slow down. It begins to strengthen into a fallout hurricane by the time we reach the end 
of this coming weekend and early part of next week. At this point, you may have a major hurricane bearing down on the northern islands of the Luster Antilles and getting close to areas like Puerto Rico. The latest European, and this you know, goes 10 days out, this is going to be another storm we're going to be talking about for a while. The latest European has this plowing into Puerto Rico and then getting into the Dominican Republic. And uh, this wouldn't be good news because, honestly, if it's this far south, um, it normally does not spell good news for the lower 48. So the Caribbean islands, any followers in that area, need to watch out because um, the, the model guidance isn't looking great for this area. But then you got the GFS. GFS develops this maybe as early as uh, this weekend. Gets it into Sam. It starts to get it a stronger tropical storm as you get into Sunday. You get into next Monday. It's an all-out hurricane. And it has it around the same area now that the European has it. Now, you back this up two or three runs. So this is the run prior to that. Look how much further north it is on the 12Z run. You back it up one run than that. And it's a little bit more northeast. So this is trending southwest. I back it up a few runs. Look at this trend. This is from... This is from the run overnight, the same time period right now. So bam, 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 bam. Look at that trend southwest. That is not good news for if you're trying to avoid land impacts from a tropical system. This is really trending towards the Euro. The GFS has actually done very well over the last two hurricane seasons. But right now, right now, potentially, GFS still might hold its own here. It, this is trending towards the European model, um, but it's still the, the operational GFS still has this ultimately going way out to sea and turning away. But it's hard to imagine that happening, and I'll tell you why here. First of all, we'll look at the height anomalies here, uh, the 500 heights here, and this basically will show us troughing and ridging. So if you look down here, this is our system on the European showing up. Um, the more pink areas and then the dark pinks, that's almost a red right in here. That's a ridging of high pressure, and that's what you call the tropical ridge. Well, it's not that strong, but it's enough. And the fact that this doesn't really get going until this weekend, uh, by the time it's really strong, you have a decent trop subtropical ridge over the storm, and it can't really go north. It has to kind of keep going due west-southwest, if you will. So it's keeping on, I'm sorry, um, west-northwest. So... It's still going this way, and that ridge will kind of push it into land interaction with the Caribbean islands. Um, what happens after that? Well, the storm is very slow, which is which is even kind of more worrisome. But it's going to have a hard time kind of turning big time north if you have a ridge of high pressure right here on top of this. And then you see these kind of this pink area right here. This almost looks like it's about to start building over Florida, which that would kind of steer it unless it finds a weakness in the here it would kind of steer it maybe into the gulf of mexico but this is 10 days out it's really hard to figure out um another thing another way you can look at this is uh the height anomalies um the blues are normally troughing or a cut off low the reds is normally ridging a ridge of high pressure and it shows that here see this uh, area an orange or red whatever you want to call that it's not much but it's enough and the fact that this storm, if this storm was strong right here, like a Category 1, 2, 3 hurricane, then it would probably try to turn here when there's an area of weakness right here. There's not really um, a cutoff. Uh, there's not, not really an upper level low. There's not really a ridge of high pressure or anything. But then it gets strong right in here. And by then, you have a kind of subtropical ridge building here. And uh, it kind of presses this into the land. Um, now, you look at the GFS, and the reason it kind of turns this is because you really don't have much of an influence of a, a subtropical ridge, but you eventually get this little nose right here that does show up. But then check out what it does here. You almost have like an upper level low right here over Florida. These tend to pull tropical systems a certain way. So realistically, it would seem like this would pull this tropical system in. It would pull it further west which would be a scary scenario for the southeast. But it doesn't really do that. It, it kind of briefly tries to. But then it has it just kind of plowing into this ridge of high pressure, which is kind of retrograding a little bit further north. But this is so far out. We're talking about a bunch of what-ifs at this range. But this is crazy. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting storm to figure out here. 
And uh, of course I waited too long and now it's taken forever for this to come through. But another thing I want to mention that's kind of scary with the strength of the storm is in the medium term, you have a nice upper level pattern here, meaning you have a nice outflow, um, which is creating its own environment, its own moist environment. So eventually it's going to get rid of this dry air that's kind of bogging it down right now at the present moment. And it's going to enter uh, more of a, an outflow where it has an anticyclonic flow here and uh, basically it has a what you call a ULAC and uh, this is basically helping to ventilate the storm which will promote strengthening of the storm in a low shear environment. Um, reason why it's struggling right now as you can see it pretty well at the same time that this tropical wave is coming you have a big plume of Saharan dust that is right on the northern part of the storm so you can actually see the dust wrapping into the circulation right here of this. It's, it's actually pretty interesting to see as you're getting into the weekend. And then eventually it gets rid of it, though. So it's not going to stick with it for much longer. You look at the potentially how strong that this storm can get. It's the latest 18Z model intensity guidance. And uh, very slow strengthening over the last, next several days. But a lot of guidance eventually has this at least making it to a hurricane. Um, if you look at the European ensembles here, never mind these little squigglies right here. That's what's left of Peter. Focus on this right here and these reds here. Notice how they're all heading straight towards land. Then you have to watch out for these southern areas that plowed into the Caribbean islands. So look at GEFS ensembles. One thing you see here, this is Sam down here showing up. Probably a little difficult to see on your screen, but that is a... Decently spread out guidance here as we're getting into early next week and then we get into Tuesday time frame and around Tuesday into Wednesday of next week is when you have to watch out for this interacting with the Lesser Antilles, the Caribbean Islands. Um, one thing you look at you look at right here is if you back this up to run at 12Z, then you look at 06Z, then you look at the overnight models, then you look at the model before that, watch how all this stuff begins to tick more southwest. That's another sign on the ensembles, which are more important than the operational, that this is ticking towards the European model. So we need to watch out. This um, it's nothing to sound of alarm about or anything like that, but this looks like probably the strongest signal for maybe a, a, a potential threatening scenario that we've had in, I don't know, probably a few, several weeks, honestly, um, but unless you count Nicholas then in a week. Um, but... Uh, thank you all. That's all I got. Um, I'll keep you all updated on this. I have a feeling this is going to become a hot topic over the next several days, and I'll keep you all upgrade, uh, upgraded. Upgraded also. I'll keep you all updated, and thank you all for the amazing support. Hope you all have a great night.